I'm John Kovach. I've been a newsman, a sports announcer, and a football coach, but the one constant since I was old enough to stand next to a stream with my dad has been fishing. I've waded rapids, stood on slick rocks, hacked through ice, and been tossed about the deck of a boat. And I want you to love fishing as much as I do, and join me on this journey. Welcome to Yankee Fisherman, presented by The Dock Shop. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Yankee Fisherman, presented by The Dock Shop, Thursday, June 7th. They're telling us it's summer, it's still a little cool. One of my favorite events of the summer is coming up, and that is the third annual Big Doug's Memorial Saltwater Shootout. Doug Thurston is joining us by phone. Doug organizes this event. Doug, this is in memory of your father, and there's a very interesting story behind it. Could you share that with us? Yep. He, uh, my father passed away in uh, New Year's Eve uh, 2015, and uh, we were, were going through all his stuff. We figured out that uh, he had been secretly contributing to this uh, the charity, the Shoreline Soup Kitchens and Pantries. So in trying to figure out a way to honor him, we uh, decided to put together his favorite pastime and uh, you know the charity that he obviously had been taking care of. Now, this is the third. How much have we seen this tournament grow over the first couple of years? <laughs> we, in the first year, we never expected it to get as big as it has. Um, first year, we ended up with about just over 100 anglers. Uh, last year, we were at 160, 170, something like that. And uh, this year, we're going to cap it out at 200. Wow. <laughs> I knew you were capping. I know you're capping at, at, at 200. And all of this money goes to Shoreline Soup Kitchens and Pantries. What towns do they yep. serve? Uh, all the way from Old Lyme down to Clinton uh, and up to Essex. Uh, they operate numerous soup kitchens throughout the week and a bunch of different pantries where uh, those uh, less fortunate can go and grab groceries. Now, this is open to all anglers, boat, small boat, shore, whatever you want to do? Yeah, we don't, uh, we don't discriminate. We're uh, we're surf, kayak, uh, boat, anybody, any way you can get your uh, line wet, we're, we'll take you in. And it's open to anywhere on Long Island Sound, correct? Yep, uh, from Block Island Sound all the way over uh, and, and up into the rivers. Uh, as long as you can get a, a monster striper or monster blue, or, you know, you're in the running. Now, as I recall last year, which was the first year I... We'll call it participated. I would question whether that is accurate. Um, it was early, <laughs> wasn't it? It was real early and real late in the in the open hours that the top fish were caught. No. Yeah, our uh, our overnight uh, anglers were were slamming the the larger stripers. I think our biggest last year was what forty nine inches from uh, Steve Kavan, and. Uh, they were all, I mean, my phone would start going off because everybody texts in a picture or emails in a picture. My phone would be going off at, you know, 2 in the morning with guys with monsters. Um, I think our bluefish was actually during the day, though. That was uh, Sean Barham, and he did a 39-inch bluefish from a kayak. Yes, I, th I think that was during the day. I think that was late in the day on Sunday. I think I was just under the wire, if memory serves me correctly, yep. which it may not. Yep. And one of the things I like <laughs> about this tournament is, it's catch and release. How do you go about policing that in a tournament with that many people and that big a scope? So the first two years, I was uh, I was taking in the entries via phone or uh, email, and this year we're we're looking to we're going to get a, a on-site tournament manager who's going to be uh, uh, taking in all the uh, entries via email, and they're going to be um, entering everything into an Excel. Um, it's all through photos. Uh, your wristband, uh, you get a wristband when you enter and you, your wristband, you and the fish need to be in the, and the measuring device need to be in the picture. And, uh, the onsite manager is going to determine, you know, how, uh, just, uh, how big it is and all that stuff. You can't do a tournament like this without outside support. Who are some of the sponsors? <laughs> we are lucky enough we to have time. so much support the first year. <laughs> Uh, we, we, we've got uh, the same people coming back year after year as far as sponsors. Uh, this year we got some new ones too, but uh, I mean our staples are you know Fisherman's Paradise, uh, Fisherman's uh, J&B Tackle, uh, A&W Marina, uh, 
sponsors our uh, child, uh, our junior angler category. Um, we've got Fishing Factory 3 in Middletown. Andrew always helps us out. Rivers End, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the local tackle shops, they all, you know, chip in. A lot of tackle shops and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, non-fishing entities in there too, like uh, Valenti Chevrolet. Uh, Diane's Bait and yep. Tackle is in there getting back to the tackle shops. And, and you can find all this information at BigDugsFishing.com. You mentioned a junior category, the Barbie Rod category back? Yes, we're having the Barbie Rod again. Uh, that was a 37-inch striper last year, which was phenomenal, but that's a that's extra buy-in at the captain's meeting and uh, it's the biggest fish on the Barbie Rod. Uh, only modification you can make is change out the line to braid. Um but that ends up being a lot of fun. It's got to be a video entry, too. Very cool. Now, dates for the tournament are July 14th and 15th. This is based at Oak Leaf Marina in Old Saybrook. You've got a mandatory captain's meeting on that Friday night, correct? Yep. Usually we have, um, uh, you know, quite a few sponsors at the captain's meeting and at the, the barbe uh, barbecue afterwards. Uh, like, you know, last year at the captain's meeting, Joe Bags showed up with loads of his uh, plastics and uh, was handing them out to everybody, putting their captain's bag. Um, at, the bar uh, at the captain's meeting and at the barbecue, we had Elisa Zuppi with uh, her asylum jigs, and she was doing uh, whatever she sold. She was uh, donating back to her profits back to the charity for the whole weekend. So it ended up turning out pretty nice. It really, if you go to this, I went last year, and I'm going to be there again this year, it, you see a lot of big names in Connecticut fishing, in Connecticut saltwater fishing, and it's really a fun time. The barbecue on Sunday is awesome. You get some great raffle prizes. What do you have so far? Uh, we've got a lot of rods this year. Um, okay St. Croix Rods is one of our sponsors. We've got uh, two, two from them. Uh, Narrow River up in Rhode Island made two custom Big Dugs uh, wireline trolling rods. Um, J and B is doing a custom combo. Uh, we, we've got a lot of knives. We have Bubba Blade and uh, Cutco on board this year, and we've got so many knives it, it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, trying to think what else we've got. Oh, Fuel Ox. Fuel Ox is one of our major, major sponsors this year. They're a, a fuel additive for uh, boats and and not just boats, actually, all engines. Um, they're going to have every uh, something in everybody's captain's bag. They're doing some raffle prizes. They're they're a big big supporter this year. All right, this is Big Doug's Memorial Saltwater Shootout, the third the third installment of it. It's a ton of fun. Doug, you can go just to the barbecue as well, or no? Yes, uh, I'm not sure. We'll we'll have it up on the website soon. I'm not sure what my sister planned as far as just the barbecue only. For you know, you can come. Uh, I think it's five or ten dollars. You can come in uh, and participate in the raffles and all that stuff. But if you want to fish, it's $40 per angler. It's $120 per boat. Entries are capped out at 200 so you're going to want to get signed up for this. And it's an we're, awful lot of fun. We're already about 50% through. 50% <laughs> through. You've got a little more than a month to sign up. I would recommend it. It's a lot of fun, the fishing. It's a lot of fun at the captain's meeting. It's a lot of fun at the barbecue. And it's one of my favorite events of the summer, all for a good cause, Shoreline Soup Kitchen and Pantries. Doug Thurston, thanks for taking a few minutes to talk about Big Doug's Memorial Saltwater Shootout with us. Thank you. We'll be back with more Yankee Fishermen presented by The Dock Shop right after this. Winter's finally in the rearview mirror, and the Dock Shop is ready to help you usher in our favorite season, summer. We've got new authorings and our usual products, clothing, jewelry, home decor, fishing tackles, and boating supplies. And now the Dock Shop does in-house laser engraving. You can add a name, a boat name, latitude, longitude, an image to drinkware, serving platters, boards, or decorative accessories. No minimum, fast turnaround. Stop in today and start your summer. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenik Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, dockshop.com.
With Want a new experience in car buying? Scamp Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. We are Connecticut's Wrangler headquarters. Come visit our new Ram Truck Center. Our Ram trucks get the job done with unparalleled style and performance. Call, click, or stop in to find the new Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, car, minivan, or Ram truck that you've been looking for. Family owned and operated for over 50 years. Save thousands right now at the Jeep Celebration Event and Chrysler Pacifica Incredible Sales Event. Now through June 30th. If you've ever thought about owning a motor coach or learning about what it's like to travel the open road in superior style and comfort, then contact Dave's RV Center in Danbury, Connecticut. Offering the best quality Class A motorhomes from Newmar, travel trailers and fifth wheel lines from Surveyor, and a toy hauler line from Work and Play. Choose from Newmar's Gas Line, Base Star and Canyon Star, or from Newmar's Diesel Line, Ventana and Dutch Star. And with unparalleled service and maintenance, Dave's RV is committed to keeping you and your motor coach safely on the road and enjoying it to the fullest. Stop by their showroom, 2 Industrial Plaza Road, Danbury, Connecticut, or call 877-483-3866. Welcome back to Yankee Fisherman, presented by The Dock Shop. In November, we talked to Joe Brooks about the upcoming documentary, Finding Joe Brooks, in which he researches his great uncle, who's called by some father of modern fly fishing. He was a pioneer in terms of new techniques, new locations, new places, and a complicated man. We now know when you're going to be able to see Finding Joe Brooks, and that is going to be on Father's Day weekend. The Sportsman's Channel will be airing it at 8 o'clock as part of the Friday Night All-Star Block. There's other showings at um, World Fishing Network and the Outdoor Channel that weekend. The Outdoor Channel is 7.30 on Saturday night, the 16th, all this Father's Day weekend. We're going to take a look back at that November interview with Joe Brooks. Um, he talks about Lefty Cray, who has since passed he talks about a number of big names who Joe Brooks fished with and talks about what this documentary was like to make. And with that, we're going to welcome Joe Brooks, who has been one of the forces behind this documentary about his great uncle and his namesake to the show. Joe, thank you so much for calling us. It just sounds like a fascinating story about a fascinating person. It is. Uh, John, uh, thank you for having me uh, on your uh, wonderful show. Uh, the, yeah, the story uh, is pretty amazing. Uh, Mike and I weren't quite uh, aware of the impact, I guess, uh, Joe had on the fly fishing industry until we really started, uh, I guess, digging in. And what drove you guys to dig in? I mean, obviously you're an angler from the, from the photos that we have of you. Is that because of your uh, great uncle? And is that what piqued your curiosity about him? Was it, was it the family relation or was it his status as a fly angler? Well, so, so we grew up with, <clears throat> with the stories that we hear from my dad around the dinner table about uh about uncle joe and i don't know about five years ago a buddy of mine out in l.a was starting a documentary production company and so i just i just penned this email to him about this crazy uncle that i had um that was you know loosely you know, a big name in the fly fishing world. And I just sort of gave him this rough outline because of his, his life was so tumultuous till he met Mary and then everything sort of changed, which most people don't know. So I just thought, wow, this is a fantastic story. Is it just because I know a little bit about the individual or, or is it just a fantastic story? And so that was really the genesis uh, of it. And Mike, my oldest brother, is a keen fisherman, and he and I always dreamed of traveling and fishing the places that Uncle Joe fished, and that was also part of uh, the initial concept and, and getting to the point, I guess, that we're at today. What did you learn about your uncle in researching this documentary? What did, what did we learn? What did you learn? What, were there things that you learned that you didn't know going in? 
I had no idea of the impact that he had on the industry in Argentina, the fly fishing industry on Argentina. For example, one of the one of the I guess leaders or fathers of Argentine fly fishing, uh, Jorge Donovan wrote a book. I can't remember the title of the book, but in one of the chapters, the chapter is called My Friend Joe Brooks, and he talks about Joe Brooks being a, a pro, like he came to them like a prophet, you know, this guy that brought these new techniques to them, which basically uh, flourished in Argentina. Now everybody can double haul, and everybody's you know, using streamers, and they use nail knots to join uh backing to uh to the fly line and and leader to the fly line and so on and and so many techniques and ways of fishing and things they'd never thought about and how to fish um was pretty pretty amazing to know that he had such a huge influence there i guess the impact in the whole saltwater fly fishing industry you know you can source back to a few guys and one of those would be would be Joe Brooks. Um, so these are some things that that we sort of learned uh, along the way. Um, yeah, the salt water part I think is big around here as we're right on the Long Island Sound. And I mean, is it fair to say that really before your uncle, nobody had really thought about taking fly fishing techniques off the coast? Well, that's not that's not necessarily true. There were some people that were dabbling, but they were using uh, salmon flies or large wet flies. You know, you'd use in streams. But one of the earliest exponents was Tom Loving of Baltimore, who was a milliner, and he would tie flies with some of his his feathers he had for making hats. Oh, that's awesome. And he was fishing for shad in the, in the upper part of the Chesapeake and also for stripers. And I know stripers are huge up your way. And that's, that's a, probably the earliest beginning of striper fishing with a fly is with Tom Loving, who, who taught uh, Joe Brooks striper fishing in the Chesapeake and upper Chesapeake uh, watershed. Very cool, and probably flies that we're still seeing today. Now, how did your uncle come? I mean, really, he became a pioneer in that you had so many celebrity fly fishers who worked with him, who sought him out. How, how did that all come about? Well, it's interesting. Um, really, he... You know, he took over from outdoor life from Bergman in, I think, 68, somewhere in there. But he he was on the American Sportsman Show, if you remember that, if your I listeners do. remember oh, I, that. I do. That's, that's going right back. But I think after, after the war, and I know Lefty talks about this, and after the war... You had all these servicemen coming back, and Joe was just in the right place at the right time. He had met Mary. His life had settled down probably first for, you know, for a very long time for him. And, it, you know, he had been fishing. He was a great athlete, you know, and everything sort of just coalesced. And, he, like I said, he was the right place, right time. He was writing. He was getting a following. Uh the show came along. Joe was probably the only American at the time, really, that had been to Argentina uh, to fly fish. He was probably the smartest guy uh, in America regarding Argentine fly fishing. That's where they, they did the pilot show for the first American sportsman show, which turned out to be a, a fishing tournament. Um, and probably from that, he became well-known through through the American Sportsman Show, his writings, and I know in Bermuda they hired him to come down to work out the fishing tourism for that country. Um, but that would be what I would think is how his 
name got around. People wanted to fish with him. Even, you know, Fidel Castro invited him down, but he wouldn't go. So he sent Lefty and a couple other guys to go down, which is a pretty cool story. And I know Lefty tells that story. Um, but Castro wanted Joe to come down and bring some of his mates and writers and fish there and then go back and write about it. So I, I would imagine that's how his notoriety grew and how then people, famous people, wanted to fish with him. How long have you been working to bring this documentary to fruition? You know, I think that's a good question. I'd have to check my, my notes. I, I reckon it's probably about, we're probably up to about five years now from the initial floating of the concept with my buddy and then getting my brother on board and then getting Lefty on board and yeah, it's probably about five years I'd say. Now we're seeing this in 2018. How is this going to be released? It will be released um, in a number of ways of which we're still working out. <laughs> um, one, one for sure will be um, will be, hopefully, it will be in a fly fishing film tour. That's what we're, fingers crossed there. That's just, will be a very short snippet, but uh, it'll be released. Um, initially, we're hoping to release it at the Brotherhood of the Jungle Cock, which is a, um, a foundation that Joe was one of the key members in starting, which is a, a fly fishing foundation set up to teach young boys and girls, I guess, now, uh, about fly fishing, about the outdoors, about the stewardship of the stewardship of the outdoors, and so we thought it'd be a wonderful opportunity to go back, release that on Father's Day in 2018, and oh, then that's awesome. a bigger a, a bigger release would be uh, well, actually, sorry, their their campfire, the Brotherhood of the Jungle Cock hold a campfire in May every year. They've been doing that since 19. 48, I think, or somewhere in there, um, to release it then to that group and then to the, to the greater audience on Father's Day in 2018. As you researched this, what was the more interesting story to you? What caught you more? His impact on fly fishing or the story behind his tumultuous earlier life and how meeting and marrying Mary settled him down? The, the impact on fly fishing is probably the easiest information because it's, it's so well documented. You know, even just through his 10 books and myriad of articles in uh, Field and Stream or Outdoor Life. But his tumultuous background is fascinating because he grew up in a well-to-do family in Baltimore he was named after his father, Joe Brooks Sr., who had a very, uh, a very successful insurance business in, in Baltimore. And so he had everything going for him. And then he got caught up in, into drinking and alcoholism. And he really fought that his whole life. But in... In his early years, he was he wanted to play professional baseball. He was signed with the Orioles' junior team, I guess, in those days, or whatever you'd call it, the the second team. And he was he was a pitcher. He was a quite a well well known and and good pitcher. And but in those days, sport wasn't really an acceptable profession. So his family, pretty much, his dad in particular, pretty much said, nah, you can't do that. And, and so his, his life really went off the rails, and he was all over the place. And, and in our research, um, which was pretty much conducted in the early days by myself and then for the, the documentary in a more serious manner by Tom Perrow, who's a, who's a writer, that he basically we couldn't find a skerrick of information about him through the depression, which what we're trying, what we're finding is that's kind of normal. Some of these guys just went off the grid. You know, there's so many people out of work, and, and America was in such a, 
a dark place, and and that is quite, I guess, in line with where Joe was. He was in such a dark place. He even went up to to Canada to get treatment for the alcoholism, and they run him through all kinds of crazy, I don't know, elixirs that they give him to, to cure it, and it must have been the way they did it back then. I don't know. You read this stuff, and it's really like, man, this would kill anybody. Oh um, and this is all fantastic stuff, and the marriages that he had, we believe he had three marriages, but we can only find two, so we're not quite sure. And So there's fascinating things that will come out in the documentary um, about Joe's tumultuous background that most probably wouldn't know, which is fascinating and which also is quite inspiring because for somebody who is so screwed up, right, to climb such a high, high mountain and to be seen by so many people what jumped such out, a great light is amazing. It, it, what jumped out at me on the website, which is joebrooksdocumentary.com, and this is, uh, I'll read this, and it, the water spoke to him and the days he spent along the coasts and riverbanks, casting a fly to lure a bass or trout, gave him solace from the nightmare he was living. Mm. And I think so many people <laughs> are looking for some degree of that, maybe not to that extent, but just some place where they find themselves and that place happens to be with a fly rod in hand. Is that something you hope viewers take from this documentary? Oh yeah, the for sure the the outdoors, you know, we've all been out there fishing and you're on the coast maybe casting lures or flies to defeating uh, stripers and you're there by yourself or you're up a stream in the mountains and you're you know you're you hear the wind through the leaves and the and the the water over the tumbling rocks and the noise that that makes and the sun is shining the sky is blue and all your worries just go away. And you can kill eight hours in a matter of seconds, can't you? <laughs> no question. No question. So that would have been what you say, the solace for him, the escape of the nightmare that he was living that he couldn't seem to get himself out of because he was addicted to, to the drink. Uh, just a fascinating story, and I'm really looking forward to when the full documentary is out. I would love to have you back on when the documentary comes back out so we can talk a little bit more about this. I'd love to come back and talk about it. Awesome. We will set that up. Joe Brooks, uh, the Joe Brooks Foundation, the Joe Brooks documentary that will be coming out in 2018. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back with more Yankee Fishermen presented by The Doc Shop right after this. Winter's finally in the rear view mirror and the Dock Shop is ready to help you usher in our favorite season, summer. We've got new offerings and our usual products, clothing, jewelry, home decor, fishing tackles, and boating supplies. And now the Dock Shop does in-house laser engraving. You can add a name, a boat name, latitude, longitude, an image to drinkware, serving platters, boards, or decorative accessories. No minimum, fast turnaround. Stop in today and start your summer. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenik Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, dockshop.com. Now teeing off, Paul Miller from Miller Nissan in Fairfield. Excuse me, Mr. Miller. What about my new Sentra? Right now, lease a 2017 Sentra S for only $97 a month. He is never going to retire. At Galt, we always put you first. As your full-service home heating partner, we provide expert delivery, installation, and maintenance for all your heating needs with knowledgeable, friendly professionals that give you peace of mind 24-7. Galt Family Companies, you first since 1863. At at Ring's End, we say it's time to re-love your home. Time to refresh and reinvigorate the way you live. And whether you're redoing something big or small, remember the letters R-E stand for Ring's End. We're the new model in home remodeling. 
A Better View Window Cleaning Plus has been cleaning glass all over Connecticut for over 20 years. They also specialize in cleaning chandeliers, mirrors, skylights, tiles, and will power wash anything that needs cleaning. They hold an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and are fully insured and bonded. When you deal with a better view, you're dealing with the best, not the rest. Call today for a free estimate, 203-284-8836, or visit them online, abetterviewcleaning.com. Welcome better back to Yankee Fisherman, presented by the Dock Shop, Hooks for Heroes. You need to sign up. This is the event that takes veterans fishing out on the Long Island Sound, out of the Halloween Yacht Club in Stamford. We plan to be there to cover that. Hooksforheroes.us. The registration deadline is next week, so do that. Saturday is the Livingston Manor Trout Parade. Parade steps off at 1 o'clock, rain or shine. If you're not doing that, get out fishing this weekend. Tight lines.